In today's digital workplace, downtime is not an option. Whether that's due to cloud storage disruption, network failures or unexpected outages, IT teams must ensure seamless access to user profiles and data at all times. In today's video, we're going to discuss something called FS Logics Cloud Cache. FS Logics depends heavily on a single storage location and that creates a, a single point of failure. But what if your organization could eliminate this risk entirely? What if your business requirement is I need my profiles to be available at all times in the event of a regional failure, for example? So in today's video, we're going to explore FA Logic Cloud Cache, explore what it is, how it works and actually see it in action. Um, we'll also explore some of the downsides that you get with it and I'll explain why. I don't normally recommend enabling it unless you have a specific requirement for disaster recovery. What is FS Logic Cloud Cache? FS Logic Cloud Cache basically gives you storage redundancy. It enables those user profiles to be written to multiple storage locations across different regions or providers. For example, um, you can write from on-prem into the cloud or you can write uh, into different regions. So I could go to UK South and North Europe or I can go to US East and US East 2, for example. In the event my workload needs to fail over into that secondary region, my profile will be available, right? In the event of an outage, FS Logic seamlessly redirects the request to the next available storage location, ensuring that the user experience isn't disrupted. Okay. And the other good thing, what it does, it basically caches the local profile for instant access. Right. So user profiles are cached locally on the virtual machines, and that reduces the resilience on real-time cloud connectivity. Even if the cloud storage becomes unavailable, employees can continue working on their cloud cache profile, ensuring business continuity. All right, so that's what we're going to discuss today. If you're new to the channel, welcome. This is the Virtual Mind YouTube channel. So on this channel, I discuss stuff like FS Logics, um, as a Virtual Desktop, um, Windows 365, Nerdio, Intune, lot, anything related to uh, and user computing in the cloud. So what we're going to do now is actually show you how you configure FH Logic Cloud Cache and I'll show you it in action. Then we'll talk about some of the downsides because it's not all upside, right? There's a reason why this is not enabled by default and I'll go into that reason shortly. Okay, all right, let's get to it. Let's actually go and configure the, the FA Logic Cloud Cache and see see what's happening under the hood. As I mentioned, we're going to be writing to multiple storage locations. The first thing we need is a secondary storage location. I'm using Nerdio to configure this. I'll show you what I've got in my environment. Here I've got two separate file shares that we're going to use for this testing. We've got the app attached file share and we've got the FA Logic file share. As you can see, these two file shares are both enter ID joint, right? I'm actually going to use this for enter ID. Okay, so we've already pre-configured the file share, so we're all good for, from that perspective. Next, we'll show you how you actually configure that. The setting that you want to enable is something called TCD locations. I'll show you how to do that in Nerdio and also outside of Nerdio. If you go to my FA Logic Enter ID, that's the profile that I'm using within Nerdio, I've ticked this box here, Use Cloud Cache. And what this setting does, this basically um, tells it to read from those CCD locations, okay? I've given it those two locations within here. Normally, if you weren't using Cloud Cache, you just have a single location. I can take those away. You can see this is switched to CCD location. Yeah. Without Cloud Cache, it's VXD location. With Cloud Cache, it's CCD location. They're, they're the different settings you need to configure. What I've told it to do here is enable Cloud Cache and then write and read from those two locations. That's with Nerdy. Let's go and see how you do without Nerdio. Okay. Okay. So this is the setting in the registry that you'd have to configure. So you can do this via group policy. So we can see here and we've got CCD locations, right? And you just put in this format here. So that's how we would configure it. Uh, you can use Intune to do that if you wanted using Intune policies. And you can also use group policies. Let's also go and see how we would do that um, using Intune and group policy. Here in the Intune configuration screen, we should be using Intune for everything, unless you're using Nerdy, of course. So the settings which you can see here are the FH Logic Cloud Cache settings held under FH Logic Cloud Cache service. You can see here we've got a couple of Cloud Cache specific settings but we've also got some settings we need to configure within the profile containers as well. What we need to configure 
are these CCD locations. This is the location of the, of the storage accounts. If you wanted to configure that, you just select that in here and then type in the path to your um, storage within there. Okay. And then we've got a couple of extra settings in here, which you can see. So you've got the maximum cache size, right? So that's the cache that's going to be held locally on the actual device. Clear cache upon force log off. So we definitely want to be enabling that. Pro provider registered. Healthy providers will go through register. Um, so that's basically going to check the health of the storage locations um, that we've got. So you definitely want to enable that setting as well. And then there's some additional settings um, you can see within here. These are the cache directory that it's using, the local disk. So what's sometimes useful is if you're using a VM which has a temp disk in Azure, that may be preferable to use that directory the reason being is because you're going to get a lot more IOPS if you write to the C drive for example that's going to be a managed disk so you may have an IOPS limitation of 500 IOPS within there but if you have a VM with a temp disk that temp disk location is probably a much better place to put your cache uh, because you'll have a, a lot faster uh, performance like you get 5000 IOPS uh, from a temp disk rather than 500 uh, that you get from a managed disk and just a quick tip there but the most important thing is the the locations right and if I uh, go back to the profile containers and cloud cache this CCD locations that's where I'm gonna put in the paths to my different storage accounts. So that's how we configure it. Within Nerdio, I'll show you how to do it now. Let me just go back to my Nerdio screen. As I mentioned within Nerdio, we just tick that Cloud Cache button um, and put the locations here. Um, and then that will inject the Regu settings onto um, an actual VM. Okay. All right, so in principle, what we've done so far is we've got two separate storage accounts, which you have shown, and uh, we've configured the local settings, the CCD locations, register setting, uh, to, to read and write from those locations. So let's log on to a session host and see what's happening. Um, and we'll look at the file, we'll show you some right, read lock files and stuff. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is show you the login experience. This is my VM and defender test so i'm just going to connect to that this is a vm which i've already pre-configured with the settings right these are the settings configured here so if i scroll down a sec you'll see me actually doing those settings here so if i go into this host port i've updated the effort logics on the session host click details and you can see the settings i've put in here so this is the value which has been updated so you can see the ccd locations I've actually just updated it with these two locations, right? So rather than using VHD locations, it's using CCD locations, and it's going to write and read my profile to both those locations and also enable Kerberos on that VM. So when we get onto the actual VM, we'll see those register settings. I'll show you what they look like, um, and then we'll like, look into that log file and, uh, and see what's happening under the hood. So this is me logging onto the VM. So you can see here, um, it's waiting for the FH or the app service. So we are logged up. So the first thing we're going to do is go into the registry and I double check I'm not those settings are already implemented. We're now in the registry. I've gone to HK local machine, software, FH logistics, and then profiles. This is the new setting you need to enable. We've got our profiles enabled and then we've got CCD locations. When you've got CCD locations, you can enable Cloud Cache. And these are my two different storage um, locations that we've enabled. All right, so I guess the first thing we need to figure out is it actually using the Cloud Cache. So let's go onto uh, one of those storage locations. Uh, let's, in fact, let me just copy that into a text file so we can see it easier. I'm just going to browse to this file share. The connection string is type SMB, right? And the connection string, and that's just a file path. So that's all we need to configure. Here you can see my username, and that was modified this morning when I was logging onto it. So let's have a look into it. So as you can see here, the structure is a bit different to what you normally get. I can see the VHD file, so that's my profile. And then we can see a lock file on there, and that's basically just locking that profile just to make sure that nothing else can write to it. And then we've got these meta files and so these metadata files. And what these actually are, these are keeping track of the changes that are happening within the profile um, because this basically works at block data level, right? And so any changes um, which have been written, reading and written from the local profile being uploaded dynamically. And basically what will then happen um, when the user logs off, uh, it'll merge all those settings into, into the VHD file. Um, and that's how the profile is updated. So that's location one, right? So let's now look at the, the second location. If we just uh, go to here, this is the second location 
that we've used. We'll look at those side by side just to see what they are. If I go to here, what we can see here is this is my primary stories location, right? So you can see this is my profile. If you go into here, this is also my profile. You can see the date, the timestamp is this when I last logged off. So that's the right file. We can see there's a lock file in both locations. So if you look in there, you can see that lock file and you can see there the profile size is exactly the same. Now, the difference is when we use Cloud Cache, we also have a local copy of the profile. So if I go to program data, phase logics, um, and then cache, the cloud cache, you can see I've got this directory here. Um, this is basically created every time that I log onto the session host and then it's removed. So you can see there, so this is the local copy. Um, so you can see that the size is exactly the same. We've got this meta file. This meta file is where I'm writing my data into, right? So you can see there we've got that and that's constantly updating. If I make any changes, they're all going to be tracked in this meta file here. And then basically they'll be written up to this profile here, right? So you can see here, this meta file was up, up last updated at 7.33 a.m. And you can see here that was also updated at 7.33 a.m. as well. So if I do a log off, it's basically going to write all the settings in my profile that I've written into here as well. So that's basically what's happening under the hood. It's actually quite simple. All it's doing is we basically copy the files locally. All the changes are written locally. And then when the user logs off, those settings are going to be merged into both profiles in both storage locations. So if I need to fail over to storage location B, I'll always have my local up-to-date copy of the profile. So let's see what's happening with the log file as well. If I go to C program data, objects, and then logs, I go to profile and here, this here, is where all my stuff is put in there. So this is my earlier logon. In fact, you can see what will actually happen when it last logged off. This is me doing a log off and we should see it writing the output to the profile. I think maybe not. Anyway, let's look at the logon process. The logon process is reading the settings that we've got in the registry. What it's doing is if you go down a bit, see there, Profile VHD path is C program data FHRT proxy. The difference here is if I wasn't using Cloud Cache, I wouldn't be reading from here. I'd be reading directly from the network file share. Because we're using Cloud Cache, we've got a local copy here, right? And then we're going to read and write to that local copy, and then the changes are going to be copied up into those different storage locations. And you should be able to see the settings in here somewhere. Yep, so it's basically reading all, all the local configuration settings that it's got. You can see here it's doing all the redirection stuff that it needs as well. That's what's happening under the hood. Not many people look into this detail, but I found this stuff really cool. It's, it's quite useful for, for troubleshooting just to see what's actually happening and the locations that you need to look at to see what's in there. All right, that's basically how it works. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned I don't normally recommend enabling Cloud Cache. And the reason being is because it adds complication to the environment. If you have a disaster recovery requirement, it makes sense. If you need Cloud Cache, if you have important data held within the user's profile that you, in the event of a regional failure or the event of a storage location failure, you have to have access to that data. Cloud Cache is the solution to go for. It'll fix that problem because it will give him redundancy for the user's profile. But when I'm speaking to customers, the first thing that I always ask is, do you need profile redundancy? Because most customers, if they're doing one drive redirection, they're redirecting their documents, they're redirecting their desktop desktop settings, they may not need the profile, right? Um, they may log on to a brand new profile and have no issue at all, right? Especially if you auto configure in your, your Microsoft Office. Now, if you have applications which require configuration or something to be in your profile, then it makes sense because when the user wants to get back up and running, they don't want to have to input all those settings or maybe there's some settings which they don't know which has been configured by their admins. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is this. If I go to log off, it's probably going to be quick now. The issue is it takes longer to sign out and sign in 
when using a phrase Aussie cloud cache. The reason is because it has to copy the profile locally or the map points, and then it also has to write all the changes back. You can see here, please wait for FS Aussie app service. That wasn't too long, but if I was in a production environment where there's a lot of activity going on, the users have got a bigger profile. I've heard many stories of sometimes it can sit there three to four minutes, either waiting to log on or off while it sets everything up. That's the main reason why I don't recommend using Glacash unless it's absolutely necessary, okay? Uh, because your users, it's a bad experience um, because they will get sat there upon that log on or log off screen. Okay, and they think something's wrong, right? If you've got, if you're sat at a screen for two, three minutes, you, you're thinking there's something wrong, yeah. Um, and there's more likelihood of profile corruption and all, all that stuff. I'll, I'll make you a simple kind of guy. So that's the reason. The other reason is I don't normally recommend it is because obviously it is increased performance overhead, right? If I log on to a, a session host and I'm just mounting the profile into a, a storage location like VHD, I've got no profile perspective or my IOPS is between the storage location and the session host. When you're using Cloud Cache, you're reading from the local profile. If you've got 20 people logged on to a session host that are all reading and writing to local profile, that can eat up your IOPS. Um, and cause performance issues um, on the host with uh, slow reads and writes. Just another added complication. Uh, as I mentioned, if you need Cloud Cache, then configure it specifically states like in the event of a disaster recovery i need your profile to be available if you have that then cloud cash is a no-brainer if you don't need that requirement in place i would advise not configuring it right um because it's additional overhead um on your uh, storage you need double the, the network storage but also the impact on the local storage as well I have seen cloud cache behave weirdly as well, especially like with slow logons and slow log offs and profile corruptions when it's been updated. As I said, I'm a keep it simple guy. The simpler things are, the less things that can go wrong. Yeah, that's that's the summary of today's video. Just wanted to make you aware what cloud cache is, how it works under the hood. I have a few customers who use it and ask them why they can't tell me why they just configured it, especially when using a single storage location. It's like, why would you do that? If you need that DR redundancy type of thing, like if you need to have that resiliency in place, then Cloud Cache is a great solution. If not, just use a the normal configuration. That's it from today's video. I hope you found it useful. I'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>